Hi and welcome back to my channel. So here I am at the entrance to Greenwich Park and we're going to be exploring a few places in Greenwich and these places are listed on my 100 free experiences in London list. We're going to look at the site overlooking Canary Wharf and overlooking some other historic buildings. We're going to go to the Greenwich Observatory to look at the Meridian Line. We're also going to look at a plaque for a remarkable black man who lived in Greenwich in the 1700s. He did some incredible things in his life and he did live in Greenwich for most of his life. So we're going to look at the plaque dedicated to him. So let's go. To the left, there is a map and we are here where it says you are here that's where we are we're going to be walking all the way up here and then going down towards the rose garden and where the ignatius sancho plaque is on the left of the rose garden as you can see there's plenty of space for parking so you can drive here but you do have to pay and display between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. you have to pay I don't know how much exactly but it's not free so this is where you would take a left you'd go down there towards the rose garden and then to the left of the rose garden is the Ignatius Sancho plaque so let's go and have a look Wow, look at that. Looks gorgeous. Wow, what a good looking building. It's an English heritage building. The Werner Collection at Rangers House. So here is the plaque to Ignatius. Sancho the rose garden is just there to our right so here is the plaque so what this plaque doesn't tell you is that Ignatius Sancho was the first person of African origin to vote in Britain in 1774 he was also a self-educated composer, writer, and a man of letters. He was enslaved for the first five years of his life on the Caribbean island of Grenada, which is where my family is from. His mother would die and he would be taken as a toddler to the UK, to London, Greenwich. No history of modern Britain can be complete without him. His journey from being born a victim of the slave trade to successful businessman. Ignatius Sancho lived in Greenwich for much of his life. He spent his early years working for three sisters before running away to live and work with the Montague family. It was the Montague family, in particular John, the second Duke of Montague, who encouraged Ignatius to read and lent books from his library. This continued education would lead to him becoming a respected composer, actor and a man of letters. Someone known for being able to read and write at a time when literacy was not common. He wrote 62 compositions between 1767 and 1779 in the midst of a profoundly racist and prejudiced society. During the 1760s, Sancho married a West Indian woman, Anne Osborne. He became a devoted husband and father, and they had seven children. His erudition, charisma, and fierce patriotism for his adopted country gained him a circle of noble and literary friends. Combined with his success in business and the arts, this made Sancho the image of the ideal Georgian man. 
and he well earned his famous portrait by Thomas Gainsborough in 1768. He was the first known person of African heritage to be published in prose in Britain. Using his writing, Ignatius was an influential figure in the movement to abolish the slave trade. He corresponded with famous novelist Thomas Stern, asking for support, whose letter of response became one of the most important pieces of writing in the abolition movement. Ignatius Sancho would become a shopkeeper in 1774 with John Montague's support. And through his shop in Westminster, he met and befriended some of the most famous and influential writers, politicians and actors at the time. As a financially independent male, he qualified to vote in the 1774 and 1780 parliamentary elections becoming the first person of African heritage to do so. He died in 1780 and soon after his extensive collection of letters were published as a book, which was an immediate hit, republished four times and used as part of the movement to end slavery. In 2018, British actor Patterson Joseph wrote co-directed and played the main character in a one-man show called Sancho, an act of remembrance, which was about the extraordinary life of Ignatius Sancho. The write-up for the show says, Sancho's story casts new light on the often misunderstood narratives of the African British experience. So I've just left the Rose Garden and the Ignatius Sancho plaque and I'm really glad I saw that. It's well worth a visit. So this is the Royal Observatory. You can see the sign there, Royal Observatory Greenwich. I'm looking for the Meridian Line. So that's the main entrance to the Royal Observatory and this lady's just explaining what to do but she told me to go down here and stay to my left and I will find the gate that will take me into the Meridian Line so that's what I'm going to do. So on the inside you can also stand across the Meridian Line but to get inside you have to pay. But the Meridian Line continues. It continues here. And so you can stay outside for free and still take your picture straddling the Meridian Line. But let's go around the corner. Maybe we can get inside around the corner. Oh, oh no, it doesn't lead anywhere, but let's just see where it goes because this is quite interesting. A little bit creepy <laughs> because it's just this pathway There's a gate here. Oh, Royal Observatory Garden. I don't know if I can get in. I can, I can get in, so I'm going in. I don't know if I'm allowed to go in. That's the gate. I don't know if I was allowed to go in, but I'm going in. So it's just a garden. Oh, I see. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's beautiful. There's a bench here. I think I'll take a little rest. So here I am in the Royal Observatory Gardens. I've never been in here before. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's lovely. Yeah, really nice. 
really lovely. So something I should add about my list is when you sign up for it, you're actually going to be connected to a Google Docs document and I'm constantly updating that document. What you can then do is download it. It's constantly changing, I'm constantly updating it because as I explore the places on the list myself, I'm discovering new things and as I discover new things, I update the list. It will possibly end up with more than a hundred things to do. For example, I discovered the plaque of Ignatius Sancho. Didn't know that plaque was there previously and so I've updated the list. So it's well worth signing up to receive the link to the list and then once you have the link to the list, you can download it. Also, anyone who signs up, at some point in the future, I'm going to put everyone's name in a hat to win a prize, regardless of where you are in the world. So here's another reason to sign up for my top 100 free experiences in London list. So select the link and sign up now. So this is why most people come to Greenwich Park to enjoy these stunning views. So where to find these views? Just beyond the James Wolfe statue. As you enter the park, you walk straight and then right opposite is where you have these views. It was sunny a moment ago. When it's sunny, even better, but we're lucky that it's not foggy or cloudy. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see things as clear, but actually, it's pretty clear at the moment. So Greenwich Park is overlooking the Thames and is home to London's most iconic views. An amazing mix of 17th century landscape stunning gardens and a rich history that dates back to Roman times and there is a project that's happening in this park at this moment. The aim of the project is to reveal, restore, protect and share the historic and natural landscape, invest in new visitor facilities and develop training, leisure and volunteering opportunities for a growing and diverse local community. So this project is called Greenwich Park Revealed. It's going to cost around 4.5 million and it's a grant from the National Lottery Heritage Fund and the National Lottery Community Fund. This whole park from the entrance where I walked in and right down to all those buildings that you see at the end there and those buildings are just before the Thames. All of that is part of the Maritime Greenwich World Heritage Site where internationally significant architecture and landscape, artistic achievement, scientific endeavour and Royal Association come together to tell the story of Britain at sea and of world timekeeping, navigation and exploration. As you can see this is a very popular spot for photography and filming and it's a great place to take a selfie too you can see that it attracts a lot of people if it was summer if we were in the middle of summer there would be a lot more people here we'd really be fighting for space but it's a little bit chilly today so it's not too bad Ahead of us in those buildings you have the National Maritime Museum and Queen's House and to the right you have the O2 entertainment space. The National Maritime Museum and Queen's House is free but at the moment you have to book a ticket in advance so even though it's free you can't just go and walk in you have to book a free ticket which is what I've done today. Later we're going to walk down there and we're going to go to Queen's House. Yeah. 
So I'm leaving the spot where you can enjoy all the views and we are going to walk down the hill to Queen's house. I did book a ticket but the time for my ticket has gone by which was half past one. I'm going to see if it works. If it doesn't work I'll just book another ticket. Wow even from here the view is incredible. I wish it was sunny. It was sunny earlier. It would have looked even more stunning but still still incredible so i just came down that hill and i'm gonna go in this direction but look how beautiful it is wow it's so gorgeous Ever wanted to kick the leaves? Ooh. So lovely. Because I missed my half past one slot, what I did was I just got on my phone and booked another ticket for half past two and that meant I can just take my time and just get down there and because the tickets are free it's fine and look there's a ship in a bottle let's go and have a look at it look at that a huge bottle with a huge ship not your average ship in a bottle wow it looks fantastic let's see if we can find out more about it it says nelson's ship in a bottle 2010 yinka shoni bear mbe so any extra information I find out about that, I'll put on the screen. Yeah, lovely. So here is a nice map. I came down, this is where I was, at the Royal Observatory. And then that's where we looked across to down here and then from the Royal Observatory I walked down to there and I walked along there the Queen's house part of Royal Museums Greenwich and as you can see free entry but you have to book a ticket so lovely here Wow, fantastic. So that's the entrance to the Queen's house. This building has featured in many TV programs, many films. So beautiful. Okay, so I'm starting my tour of the Queen's house. I just came through this bit where they were showing a film, but I thought I'd skip that bit. Anyway, I'm just gonna make my way up these stairs. This is the way to go. Or you can also take a lift if you like. There's a lift there, so you can take that as well. There's, oh. The tour is this way. Oh wow. Look at that. I must admit I do love these old paintings. I do love them.
Francis Russell, 4th Earl of Bedford. So that's who that is there. Oh my God, there's nobody here. <laughs> Didn't expect it to be so empty. Wow, this is lovely. not sure what this room is but can you imagine attending a ball in this room like wow that's amazing so i believe we're supposed to go in this direction it's so beautiful here outside you can see the ice skating rink so we'll go and take a closer look at that in a moment This room shows British artists' fascination with the sea during the first half of the 20th century. Look at that. Oh look, Prince Philip. I believe this is the end of the tour because this is the last room it's well worth the visit really really nice and hardly anybody here oh I thought the tour had ended because I the last place I went was in that room over there but actually, as you come out here, you go upstairs. So the tour continues upstairs. I was thinking that's a little bit of a short tour. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's go upstairs and see what we find. Oh, this bit takes you to that big room from the top. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's really nice. Ooh. And then you can look down. Wow, lovely. Oh, I love it up here. Can you imagine going to a party in this space? I mean, how brilliant. Oh, it's so nice up here. I love it. Spectacular. Okay, so it continues over into here. Oh, wow. That's incredible. It's really lovely. Oh, look at this. This is very unusual. So this painting is a reminder of the histories of colonialism and slavery, which continues to shape migration patterns today. That's an incredible picture. Let's continue into the next room. Royal children.
So in this room, it's all royal children. Into the next room. Wow, what a gorgeous room. It's just taking the room. This person definitely looks of African heritage. Let's see who he is. Oloda Equiana. I've read about him before. Was a key figure in the fight for the abolition of slavery. He wrote a memoir of his life as an enslaved person that has been credited with helping to pass the bill that ended transatlantic slavery within the British Empire. Yes, we have to celebrate these people who helped to bring slavery to an end. Oh, just lots of wonderful pictures. Look at this one. I can see she has a black handmaid as well. Lady Elizabeth Keppel, yeah, and an unnamed black woman. Well, she's a bridesmaid, apparently. Wow, that's a bridesmaid? That dress, she looks like the bride. That's a lovely painting. Oh, I love it. Oh, look at this one. I'm gonna guess it's Italy. Look at this. Oh, this is a toilet service. <laughs> a toilet service was often gifted to a woman on her marriage. Wow. That's quite impressive. <clears throat> Okay, oh, so maybe that's it. Oh, but look at this over there. That's nice. So now we're going down these stairs. And all the way down these stairs. Look at these clocks. Wow. The governor's party. This is an interesting painting. It's just the sea. I don't actually think there's anything in it apart from the sea. That's quite fascinating, actually. Rain, rainbow and stormy seas, North Cliff, Whitby. Yeah, great. Frank Carr, the second director of the National Maritime Museum, 47 to 66. This area is called Conservation in Action. We've got an explanation here. It says, here in the Queen's House, the building where it was first started, this masterpiece is being restored to its former glory and you can watch it as it happens. Okay. Oh. Wow, great. So this painting is called A Royal Visit to the Fleet. There was people on it earlier. I guess it's closed now. But here it is. Thanks for joining me on today's vlog. Don't forget to access my top 100 free experiences in London. It will take you through to a Google Docs 
which is constantly being updated and then you can also download it so thanks again and I'll see you soon mm -hmm.